which shoe takes the biscuit, which is the winner in this shoe battle. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a shoe battle for you today between the Nike Zoom Fly 4 and the Rebel V2. Both of these are road running shoes for sort of tempo type running, so slightly faster than your easy stuff. Um, I've been trying them out over the last, well, month, this guy, and the last few weeks for the Nike shoe. Um, and I thought today I'd do a shoe battle between the two. If you enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more running related content. Um, and let me know down below. I'm always interested to see what shoe you think I should be reviewing next. So this Nike shoe is the Zoom Fly 4. It is the training partner to, to Nike's um, road racing shoe, the Vaporfly. And this is the Rebel V2 from New Balance, which again is the training shoe partner to the Fuel Cell RC Elite. So both of these shoes are training shoes, but sort of the high end the higher end training shoes from um, the respective companies that are meant to pair directly with their road racing shoes. I'm going to be putting these shoes head to head across a number of categories such as performance, durability, weight, price point um, and finally concluding which shoe if I could only buy one um, I would purchase again and the overall winner in this shoe battle. So first of all let's start with some specifications with the Nike up first. We have a 38mm stack height in the heel, dropping 8mm to a 36mm um, stack height in the toe box. This midsole here is Nike React midsole, um, it's, a, it's a compound that they use across all their training shoes. And um, We also have a carbon fibre plate which I believe is the same one in the Vaporfly sort of wedged between this Nike React foam. The Rebel V2 on the other hand is 26 millimeters in the heel dropping 6 millimeters to 20 millimeter in the toe box so slightly less of a drop in the new balance and the nike shoe has around 10 millimeters uh, more foam in that heel area so a much higher stack height in the nike shoe than the rebel v2 so our first category in this shoe battle is the weight which shoe is the lightest and therefore the winner of this battle First of all, the Nike Zoom Fly 4 comes in at 272 grams in my UK size 8. So quite a heavy shoe, especially for the tempo type efforts, um, especially when compared to the Rebel V2, which is just 199 grams in my UK size 8. So a clear winner for the weight is the Rebel V2. Um, yeah, some 73 grams lighter than the Nike shoe, so yeah, quite considerably lighter. Moving on to the comfort, let's start with the Nike shoe. So we have this sort of fly knit upper, which gives the shoe a sort of sock-like fit. Um, a really, really good lockdown thanks to this um, mid midfoot support system they've got here, along with the lacing system. So yeah, this shoe has an excellent lockdown. There is a little bit of room I've noticed in the toe box. Um, but I quite like that, um, it lets my toes sort of spread out a bit more. Um, but yeah, an excellent lockdown in the Nike um, Zoom Fly 4. The Rebel V2, on the other hand, has a bit more of a stripped back feel. It has sort of an off-center lacing system, which gives the shoe a nice lockdown. Um, overall, I would say, in terms of comfort, it's, it's pretty good. It's not quite as comfortable as the Nike Zoom Fly 4, so I'd have to give it to the Nike shoe in terms of comfort. Moving on to arguably the most important category, which is performance. We'll start with the Rebel V2 on this one, I think. So we have a very, very soft uh, midsole, probably one of the softest I've ever felt in a running shoe, but it's also highly responsive, which provides um, a really nice, smooth ride. Overall performance, I would say, is excellent in this Reb in the Rebel V2. It does, however, lack a little bit of support um, because it is such a soft shoe. It sort of you can feel it moving underfoot when running in this shoe. I've not really had an issue with that, but um, it could be potentially an issue for some people. Say if you prefer more of a stable ride and at tempo speeds, this shoe feels effortless. Um, the combination of that fuel cell, nice responsive midsole and yeah I think the overall weight of this shoe makes it really really responsive and is excellent at those tempo 
paces. On the other hand, the Nike Zoom Fly 4 has a much firmer uh, midsole. Unfortunately, the responsiveness in this shoe was a little bit disappointing. Um, despite having that carbon fibre plate, I just think that React midsole that it has in it is very, very dense, which meant at tempo speeds, it sort of felt a little bit clunky, um, not as light and, and snappy as the Rebel V2. So yeah, that gives the Rebel V2 a clear standout win in terms of performance. On to the price point quickly, the Nike Zoom Fly 4 is £144.95, whereas the Rebel V2 is £120. So that's £25 cheaper for the Rebel V2. It has the clear winner. Um, I will talk about durability in just a second, but for me, that, that £25 saving is hard to argue with, with the Rebel V2. So the clear winner for price point goes to the New Balance. So moving on to durability, the Nike Zoom Fly 4 is a highly durable shoe with this Nike React midsole. Um, I know I'm going to get plenty of miles out of this one. It also has these areas of um, high impact which have been reinforced with sort of a harder rubber. Um, so yeah, this one is going to be a very, very durable shoe. On to the New Balance, I believe the durability of this shoe is going to be slightly less durable than the Nike shoe, just because this midsole is a lot softer. Um, I've already felt it starting to compress. And on the bottom of this shoe, there's a lot more exposed um, uh, fuel cell foam here, which is already starting to wear down. So yeah, I think in terms of durability, I would have to give it to the Nike Zoom Fly for a much more durable shoe due to that Nike React midsole. And finally, which shoe wins the battle? Is it the New Balance or is it the Nike? Um, despite the Nike being much more durable um, and having a, a slightly better sort of comfort and lockdown factor, I have to give it to the New Balance Rebel V2. Um, if I could only pick one of these shoes, I would pick the New Balance. It's just super lightweight shoe, very, very responsive. And if I'm honest, I probably wouldn't change a lot about this shoe. It's pretty much spot on for those easy slash tempo runs and I've really, really gotten on well with it. So if the Nike Zoom Fly was a little bit lighter um, and it had maybe a Zoom X midsole, I believe that it probably would come out on top. But this shoe feels a little bit outdated to me. Um, and unfortunately, the New Balance just, just beats it pretty much across the board, apart from in those sort of durability and um, comfort factors. So yeah, if I had to pick one, it would be the New Balance Rebel V2, an excellent shoe. So yeah, that pretty much summarizes today's video between these two shoes. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Aspire to run and run to inspire, and we'll see you with another shoe review soon. Thank you.